who was the god Jove. If you are returning to the Classic Masterworks channel, welcome back. If you are new, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you will be made aware of our latest content. And now, on with the story. Jove, also known as Jupiter, was the supreme god in Roman mythology. The two share the same features and characteristics. In Roman mythology, Jove was the son of Saturn and the husband of Juno, the queen of the gods. He was the equivalent of the Greek god Zeus and was considered the most powerful of all the gods. After he took credit for rescuing his brothers and sisters from their father Cronus, Zeus became king of heaven and gave his brothers, Poseidon and Hades, the sea and the underworld, respectively, for the domains. Religiously, Jove was worshipped as the supreme deity, and his temple on the Capitoline Hill in Rome was a major center of reverence. The root of both, Zeus, and, Jupiter, is in a Proto-Indo-European word for the often personified concepts of, day, light and sky. In Roman religion, sacrificial victims, hostiae, offered to Jupiter were usually white animals, such as an ox, castrated bull, lamb, or whether, a castrated goat or castrated ram. These sacrifices were typically made on specific days, such as the Ides, a term used to refer to certain days of the month, or the Nundanae, a weekly Roman market day. In some cases, the gender of the sacrificial animal was specified, such as the requirement that a lamb offered as a sacrifice to Jupiter be male. However, there were exceptions to these rules, as demonstrated by the sacrifice of a ewe lamb to Jupiter by the flame in Dialis during the vintage opening festival, and the sacrifice of a ram on the Nundanae by the Flaminica Dialis. In times of crisis, such as during the Punic Wars, it was even recorded that Jupiter was offered every animal born in a given year. Throughout the Roman Republic the cult of Jupiter remained central to Roman life. After the fall of the Republic, Augustus diminished Jupiter's importance slightly in favor of new foundations Apollo Palatinus and Mars Ulta, but he kept the god as the protecting deity of the reigning emperor as representing the state, as he had been the protecting deity of the free Republic. Jove was the god of the sky and the thunderbolt, and was often depicted carrying a lightning bolt or a staff. As the chief deity in the Roman pantheon, he was seen as the guardian of the state and its laws, and was revered as a powerful and mighty figure, associated with justice and righteousness. Jove was often invoked in oaths and was believed to be able to punish those who broke their vows. The eagle was particularly important in Roman religion, as it held precedence over other birds in the taking of auspices, a form of divination in which the gods were asked for guidance, and became a common symbol of the Roman army. Jupiter's association with the sky and the eagle made him a divine witness to oaths, and he was believed to protect the state and its citizens. In the Capitoline Triad, a group of three Roman deities, Jupiter was the central guardian of the state along with Juno and Minerva. His sacred tree was the oak. Jove, or Jupiter, is a symbol of authority, power, and strength in classical literature and art. In classical works, Jove is often depicted as a wise and just ruler, and is frequently invoked as a symbol of order and stability. In addition to representing authority and power, Jove is often seen as a symbol of the natural world, particularly the sky and thunder. In Roman mythology, he was the god of the sky and the protector of the state, and was often depicted holding a staff or a scepter, symbols of his authority. He was also associated with lightning and thunder, and was believed to wield these powerful forces as a means of maintaining order in the world. In addition to his role as the god of the sky and thunder, Jove was also associated with agriculture and fertility. He was believed to be responsible for the abundance of the earth and the prosperity of the people. In this role, he was often depicted holding a cornucopia, a symbol of abundance and prosperity. Jove was also known for his numerous love affairs and children. In Roman mythology, he was the father of many gods and goddesses, including Apollo, Mercury, and Mars. In Greek mythology, Zeus was also known for his many affairs, and his children included Athena, Apollo, and Hermes. Despite his importance and power, Jove was not immune to the flaws and weaknesses of mortals. 
He was known to be prone to jealousy and anger, and was sometimes depicted as being capricious and unpredictable. Overall, Jove was a central figure in Roman and Greek mythology and played a significant role in the pantheon of gods and goddesses. He was the supreme deity and was revered for his power, strength, and ability to bring prosperity and abundance to the people. In classical works, Jove is often depicted as a powerful and mighty figure, and is frequently invoked in literature and other works as a symbol of authority and power. Some examples of Jove being used in classical works include, in Homer's, Iliad, Jove is depicted as a powerful deity who intervenes in the Trojan War and helps decide its outcome. In the, Odyssey, Jove is depicted as a powerful deity who intervenes in the affairs of mortals, helping the hero Odysseus on his journey home. Jove is portrayed as a central figure who helps guide the hero Aeneas on his journey and ultimately helps him establish the Roman state in Virgil's, Aeneid. Jove is portrayed as a god who is capable of transforming people and objects in Ovid's, Metamorphoses, and one who is responsible for many of the miraculous events described in the poem. In Shakespeare's time, swearing by the ancient gods was common practice and the Roman god Jove or Jupiter would often be mentioned in this way. In Henry V, King Henry swears, by Jove, and Lear in King Lear swears, by Jupiter, both using the ancient Roman god to swear in the strongest way. We hope you have enjoyed this brief look at the god Jove. If so, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the Classic Masterworks channel. Until next time, goodbye.